So this is a little bit of a tougher question for data sufficiency because it does involve a little more math uh, than some data sufficiency questions do. And also it's a 3D shape, which is usually tough for people. So the first thing I wanna say is the uh, volume of a cylinder is equal to the height times pi r squared. So any 3D shape, uh, volume is going to be three dimensional. Pi r squared is two dimensional. Height is uh, one dimensional. And so if we have the height is equal to six feet, then we're looking for pi r squared uh, to get the volume of the entire tank. And we would have to use that information in some way to get the volume of the liquid inside. Now, we don't know if the liquid's filled all the way up. We don't know if it's filled uh, halfway up. We don't know if it's filled a quarter of the way up. And so depending on which of those situations it is, it will take up some fraction of the interior volume. But we do know that it's filled to a height of two feet. So let's look at statement one and consider what this means. We already know that the, the length of this tank when it's laid on its side like this is six feet. Now, if the diameter is four feet, that means that the radius is two feet. And if the, if the gas is filled to a height of two feet, it is filled directly to the middle of the tank. And if we know that the radius of the tank is two feet, we can definitely solve the volume of the tank. And that means that we can solve half the volume of the tank, which would be filled up with gasoline, which means that statement one is sufficient. So because we know that it's filled exactly halfway up with gas, and we know that we can calculate the volume of the entire tank, we know we can get half the volume, which would give us the volume of the gas itself. So knowing all that information, let's look at statement two separately now. Statement two says, the gas, the top of the gas forms a square that is 24 square feet. Well, if you imagine what it looks like inside this circle, looking at the end of the barrel, wherever the gas lines up, it creates kind of like a straight line. And if you then take that back along the length of the barrel, it will intersect the other surface in a straight line as well. And then the distance back that it goes the distance back that it goes, we know that this from here to here is six feet. So that means that the width of this rectangle that is created by the top of the gasoline must be four feet, which means that the area is 24 feet, which is what they told us. Now, if the width of the top of the gasoline is four feet and it's filled to a height of two feet, we're in a weird situation where this is exactly twice this. Now, this will only occur at one perfect spot. And that is where you are at the midsection of the circle and you have the radius and the diameter as the two, uh, the two heights. Because if you imagine that this was filled uh, just a little bit up. So imagine we had a circle. Let's pretend that we still have a radius of two just for our imagination. We have a radius of two. Pretend that it was filled up to like right here. Well, when it's filled up to right here, we have a very perfect shape. We have, this is, this is two, this is two. And that means we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle that has two root two. Now, do we still have that 45, 45, 90 relationship as the oil goes down? Well, if you just look at this optically, this is not a, gonna be a 45, 45 degree angle. Just drawing it out shows me that it's going to change over time. And the further down the oil goes, the more extreme this is going to get, where the height is going to pale in comparison to the width. So this only happens at one magic point. I think of this visually, and there is a mathematical way to prove this, but it's an absolute nightmare. So I just wanna think about it visually, and I'm like, yep, that only makes sense at one magic point, which is at the point at which you are filled halfway up so that the height of the gas is the radius, and the width of the top of the gas is twice the radius or the diameter. So there's this magic point where two times the height is, e is equal to the width. And so we now know that we are at this magic point right here. And since we know the gas is filled two feet high and we know that the diameter is four feet, we can get the volume of the entire tank. And then again, we can solve half the volume of the tank since we know the gas is filled halfway up. And that tells us that we can solve the volume of the gas. And this is again, sufficient. 
This is a very tough question. It doesn't look sufficient in either statement at first, but when you bring in the extra thought process of just thinking about what happens as you start moving the oil around in the tank, it can very quickly prove to be sufficient without doing any real math. The only real math I did was on like the 24, figuring out that that would mean that the width of this rectangle was a four, which is kind of tough to visualize uh, if you've never seen this before, but it's a tough question. It's not really gonna hurt you if you get it wrong. Try to not waste too much time on questions like this. Try to get to an educated guess by thinking visually. That will help you move through the test faster. And like we've said before, you don't need to get every question on the quant right to get a fantastic score. You can get eight or nine or 10 questions wrong and still get a 48 or 49 out of 51 on the quant, which is the type of, type of score that could get you to like a 760. And so we just want to make sure that we're not wasting time on questions like this that won't hurt us. We continue to move through the test at an efficient pace and finish the test on a high note.